Hey there, folks. This is Mr. Young, and I'm going to run through the uh, pre-lab uh, information for Lab 8.2, the Metal Reactivity Lab. Okay, so uh, going through this quickly, when metals react, they tend to lose electrons because metals generally have one or two or three valence electrons. Easiest thing for them to do is lose electrons to become more stable and get that A discrete feeling. So looking down group one, that's column one on the periodic table, these guys all have one valence electron. That gives them similar properties. When things have the same number of valence electrons, they tend to have similar properties. Hydrogen has one valence electron also. It's up there above lithium on the periodic table. It's a little bit weird because hydrogen is a gas. It's a nonmetal, not a metal like everything else in group one. In Europe, they actually put hydrogen over above group 17 on their periodic table. Instead of thinking of it as having one valence electron, they think of it as missing one valence electron. It wants to get to two like helium. So they say, oh, it fits better in group 17. Either way it works. Uh, uh, but it is a little weird to have a non-metal sitting above the metals on the top left corner. Anyway, uh, what metal is most reactive in this group? Francium is. Why is that? Well, the bigger the atoms get as you or the bigger the elements get as you go down a group they've got more shells of electrons and when they have more shells of electrons the nucleus is kind of shielded from those outer valence electrons and so if the valence electrons are far away from the nucleus and hidden by all those shells of electrons it makes the uh, electrons in the valence shell easier to remove or harder to hold on to. So francium that has its valence electron farthest from the nucleus and more shielded from the nucleus has the easiest valence electron to remove. So francium is the most reactive because remember reactivity means something is eager to lose or gain electrons. So in general for metals going down any group of metals as radius increases reactivity increases because the elements become more and more likely to lose their valence electrons. It's easier to remove valence electrons from bigger metals. If we look down group two, you can decide between barium and magnesium. Oh, barium has six shells of electrons versus magnesium that only has three. So barium is bigger. Barium is gonna have an easier time losing its valence electron. That means barium is gonna be more reactive. Now the nonmetals are kind of the flip of this. Nonmetals like to gain electrons to become stable because nonmetals tend to have five or six or seven valence electrons. Looking down group 17, they all have seven valence electrons, but the rule is kind of flipped. Fluorine is actually the most reactive because fluorine really wants to steal some electrons from somewhere, and fluorine has the fewest number of shells in group 17. So the nucleus is right out there with its positive charge trying to pull in negative electrons. The, as we go further down that group, the radius increases as we go down that group. Reactivity decreases because then the nucleus is more and more shielded away and it's not as good, it's not as able to pull in extra electrons. Okay? The noble gases, they're not reactive at all because they're already stable. They've got eight electrons. They've got that age is great feeling. So there's no need for them to lose or gain electrons. So metals and non-metals are a little bit flipped from each other. For metals, reactivity increases as we go down a group. As they get bigger, it's easier to remove an electron. For non-metals, reactivity decreases as you go down a group. It's easiest for the ones at the top of the non-metal groups to steal an electron or two from somewhere. So they have flipped patterns. Okay, and last question is in those metal reactions that you saw or are going to see in the videos, all those metals, potassium, lithium, and sodium, react with water in this pattern. So two potassium plus two HOH makes two KOH, hey, that's a base, and hydrogen gas. So all those metals will react with water to produce a base and produce hydrogen gas. And we used phenolphthalein, or you're gonna see us use phenolphthalein to detect that base that's produced when lithium, sodium, or potassium react with water. This reaction with a single element potassium kicking out some hydrogen. So now potassium is joined into the uh, that molecule and hydrogen is by itself and single. Well, that's a single replacement reaction. It's a little bit of a, a different one than you've seen before, but it still is a single replacement reaction. Okay, that brings us to the end of the pre-lab. Thanks for watching.